Oh yeah. Happy Victory Monday morning to all of you folks in the DC area and all Washington football fans around the world. Doesn't it feel so good? Doesn't it feel great to talk about this team after a victory like they had yesterday against the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers or Tampa Bay Buccaneers? The Washington football team played probably their best, most complete game of, the, of really the entire season. And this is something that they needed to do because, you know, if you've looked at the last several games, you've seen, you know, glimpses of a defense finally starting to come together a little bit. You Then you started to see, you know, the offense at times able to move the ball, just couldn't really score, and just, you know, could not put together four full quarters of football to win football games. And they had, I mean, you go back and look at the Green Bay game. Washington pretty much beat themselves in that game. They could have they could have beat the Green Bay Packers, but I digress. Uh, they beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yesterday, which I tell you, uh, you know, they had some key injuries out. Uh, of course, um, Rob Gronkowski did not play yesterday. Godwin did play. Um, he wasn't a huge factor, though, but he was in there. You know, the, how things started off, I was like, all right, you know, this is just pulling the wool over my eyes. You know, you're going to suck me in with Tom Brady, you know, throwing two picks in the first half there. And and one, he, I mean, he, that was all on Tom Brady. I mean, it was a horrible interception by him. The other one, probably not quite his, his fault. It was kind of a ricochet, you know, bounced off hands of the receiver, and we just happened to get it. Um, William Jackson the third made a good play there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, all that being said, what really came down to this, you know, the last Tampa Bay Buccaneer game, of course, playoff game, the defining moment seemed like was Taylor Heineke's scrambled out to the left and diving for the cone, which all of us Washington football fans will probably remember for the rest of our lives. But I think yesterday's defining moment was that 19 play over 10 minute drive that Washington had to secure the win. As John Kemp said, it was more of a seeing a team willing itself to win, you know, not making any mistakes. Certainly they were facing third down situations and they converted those third down situations. I mean, this was a team that was not going to beat themselves. If the Bucks were going to beat them, then it was going to be the Bucks that made the plays to beat them. Washington was putting themselves in a position to where they were going to try to put this game on ice. And I mean, that drive... <laughs> That was one of the best drives, honestly, I think I have seen in years. I mean, this was a drive that, you know, you, you would see during the, honestly, the, the glory years um, going back. But this is what I would see on a regular basis from Joe Gibbs. You know, man, steady running game, you know, chunking it up four yards here, five yards here, um, you know, short passes to keep the uh, game would keep the drive going and then just players making plays you know Terry McLaurin making that catch and honestly that should have been a penalty I'm sorry it should have been a penalty on that play it would have been a penalty on any other team I promise you it would have been but he got up and he showed <laughs> honestly I, it's almost like watching wrestling you know when um your, your favorite wrestler, you know, gets knocked down by some huge move by the, by the heel. And then, 
he just gets up and he just starts like thumping his chest and all that. That's exactly what it looked like with Terry McLaurin yesterday. I mean, honestly, I was so scared to death when he took that hit, but he, that dude got up and he was, he was fired up, man. He fired everybody else up. And I think that's probably what helped Washington to, you know, finish that drive. They were like, we are not going to be denied. And they were not. Uh, Antonio Gibson easily walked it in for, for a touchdown on that fourth down play. It was just all around, it was it was great. Uh, coaching was, was solid. Um, you know, the, the, you know, play calling was solid. You could see that the players, they were fired up for this game. They were ready to come out and play football. In years past, you would see this team kind of, you know, come back off of their bye week flat. Not this team. This team made some adjustments, and they came out and they played their butts off. Now, it's not all, you know, roses. Certainly, we have suffered some injuries Definitely the devastating injury for Chase Young. This, I can't believe I'm still talking about, you know, actually saying the words that Chase Young is out for the rest of the season. Um, it's an ACL. Now, I know that the team doesn't want to be official about this until they have done all of their battery of tests, but it's an ACL. And it's not going to just put him out for the rest of the season, but think about it. We're in just a little over halfway in this season and it takes a good year to come back from ACL like that. Um, so we may not see Chase Young at the beginning of next year. He may be on the sidelines for several games until, uh, you know, Ron Rivera can try to start working him back in. Now he's going to fight and he's going to work his, you know what off in order to get back going but i would not expect to see chase young even at the beginning of next season it's just it takes time for acls to heal and uh so yeah unfortunately i, I would i will be extremely shocked if we come back to find out oh it was just a sprain i don't think it was a sprain i think he's out um so that being said we course we lost our bookends Montez Sweat for the pretty much the rest of the season and then Chase Young for the rest of the season you know the other guys came in though uh, they stepped up uh, Shaka Tony guys like that coming off the bench uh, Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio were still able to kind of do you know rotating guys in in and out and so you know the Certainly, the defense is going to take a huge hit on that. But here's the bright side with all of this. If there ever is a bright side with someone getting injured, and it's not. But, you know, you're allowing these other guys to come in, get more playing time, to get their feet wet, to get some, you know, some confidence going, some experience. Uh, but you're building your depth up this way. So when your starters are back in there and they're healthy, you're going to have these guys who are very seasoned, who can come off the bench, and there's not a drop-off of talent. So sometimes situations like this actually helps to make the team better because, yeah, they realize it's next man up. And so you have to be able to have these guys coming in there, coming off the bench, and performing well and keeping things going just as if the starters were in there. And so over the next several weeks, we're going to see exactly what this defense is made of uh, without guys like Montez Sweat, guys like Chase Young, who are going to be out the rest of the season. Uh, you know, kicking was, was pretty good. Uh, Sly came in, and I just, you know, I noticed his kicks just seemed like they... I know this is kind of sounds kind of dumb, but it seemed like his kicks were just more confident. Um, you can just see, okay, that kick is going in there. Uh, that you could just see the trajectory, and you're like, okay, yeah, he nailed this one. A lot of times, you know, you'll see field goal kickers. They'll they'll kick it. They'll try to put some type of spin or arch on it, and you're thinking it's going to go in, and then it 
hooks to the left or right. Um, Slides seem like, you know, wherever he placed that ball, that's where it's going. Um, he did pretty well with kickoffs, I thought, as well. Um, he did allow a couple of, of run backs, but, you know, nothing that hurt us. And, and so I think we'll be okay with Sly for the rest of the season. Um, we just need somebody consistent, somebody we can trust uh, back there kicking uh, the football. And, and so it's going to come down to games like that. I mean, look at yesterday, Tampa Bay missing that extra point. That was huge. That really changed the strategy that Tampa Bay was going to have to, if they got the ball back, they were going to have to score a touchdown to beat us. And that really, that put a lot of pressure on them. Kicking that, if they had made the extra point, then, you know, they would have been like, okay, we're fine. You know, we get the ball back. We got to go into overtime. It's okay. They're not going to beat us. So that tells you, that shows you right there how important it is to have a good kicker that can kick extra points automatically, even though extra points are probably no longer automatic, uh, but someone who's dependable, who can kick game winners for you, because kickers will change the complexion of the football game for sure. Now, if we look at the stats yesterday, we see that Taylor Haneke was... 26 for 32, 256 yards, one touchdown. So uh, a pretty decent day for Taylor Heineke, I think. Uh, Antonio Gibson, yeah, 24 carries for 64 yards, two touchdowns. Guy was a workhorse. Uh, Jarrett Patterson had uh, four carries for seven yards. Uh, J.D. McKissick didn't get the ball a whole lot, uh, a couple of times for four yards. Uh, Terry McLaurin had... Six targets yesterday, six receptions for 59 yards. It was an average of almost 10 yards per completion. Uh, DeAndre Carter, who continues to impress, three yard, uh, three catches for 56 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Ricky Seals-Jones had uh, a few targets. Of course, he was the other guy who got hurt. I uh, don't know anything about his injury just yet, but it looks like we may start to see a little bit more of um, uh, Samus Reyes. Sorry, uh, I need more coffee. Samus Reyes, so um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Cam Sims had a couple of targets. Uh, Dax Millen, of course, had a couple of targets. Lost that, that fumble. Uh, looked like he was going to get the first down. And then just got the ball knocked out of his hands, um, which uh, led to a Tampa Bay touchdown when they got the ball back. Um, Adam Humphreys, of course, uh, I'm surprised he only had that one catch, but it was uh, to convert that third down, so it was a big catch for him. Um, you know, overall, this was... Like I said, this was a complete game for the Washington football team. This was an outstanding showing. And this was something that we have been waiting to see. Now, I know that this also hurts our chances with the draft because everybody wants us to draft as high as we possibly can to draft a quarterback. And we, we're expecting that we're going to have another quarterback next year. As much as that we love Taylor Heineke when he shows up for games like this, he's not the future. So we realize that. At the same time, I, I'm always going to elect to see this team win as win many games as they possibly can as opposed to watching them lose. Uh, because it's very hard to see progress when you're seeing the team lose constantly week in, week out. Um, as fans, you want to see them win because you're seeing – what it's like, or, or you're seeing a team that is putting it together, that's showing up, and they showed up today. Maybe the light bulb, maybe it's came on now for them. You know, if the light bulb coming on, they're realizing that we can beat the Bucks. why can't we beat the rest of these teams? None of these teams are that much better than us at this point. So who knows, could happen. They could go on another roll, um, 
How will that affect us next year for getting a quarterback? Let, let's worry about the offseason when it gets here. Right now, I'm still hanging on. We're three and six. And Dallas is seven and two. They won huge yesterday. So, you know, Dallas will likely have the division as much as I hate to say that. But let's see what this team can do. You know, if this team can at least finish the season, even if they don't make the playoffs, but they finish with nine wins, uh, that would be a testament to the will of this team. So that being said, hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe to this channel if possible. Guess what? I'll see you in the next one and hell to the Washington football team. Yeah.